Hey everyone, I've got Mo here, and we've been going over some technical stuff. She writes bullet points, that's why she's talking today. I have got her caffeinated up on coffee back there. We're at home, and we're hitting the Kahlua. Just a little bit. All right, so we're gonna let her talk about Tesla here. Tell us about Tesla, baby. Tesla has an all-electric semi coming out they're projecting in 2019. So they're advertising it as 500 miles. There's actually two models. Uh, the model that is priced at 150,000 will go 300 miles. And the model that's priced at 180,000 will go 500 miles. They have four motors. I'm not for sure how electric cars work. Do you know why they have four motors? Because they can. Because they can. Okay. That's the technical reason right there. And they also have some self-driving capabilities. So initially I'm going to guess that that's going to be a bunch of safety stuff. Like stopping and different stuff. But my long-term guess would be second and third generation Tesla electric vehicles are going to also be... What do they call Autonomous? They're going to be self-driving? That's our speculation. Yeah, they didn't say that, but... We said it. They did say some self-driving capabilities. That just means that something's going to come like, oh, we're not going to give you tickets for not wearing your seatbelts, but we're going to give you a warning and the next year we're going to give you tickets. That kind of stuff. They claim that the truck is going to pay for itself in fuel savings over the lifespan of the truck, saving you $200,000. They didn't tell you what the lifespan of the truck was though. The average truck uses about $50,000 in fuel a year as a single, running single, you know, 90,000 or so if you're running team t team rig. So well, I'll do that. And then it may also depend on your electric rates, where you're at, I mean, mm -hmm. you know. But it's gonna be free powered with the sun, right? Who's paying for the solar panels? Well, it'll be just a little <laughs> charge. Um, Tesla currently has orders with J.B. Hunt, Walmart, Myers. They all have reserve trucks. So, I mean, it looks like they're going to roll them out. However, something that's not as common is there are other companies that are making electric trucks. Uh, Bosch has partnered with Nikola Motor Company. Another one is BYD. I've never heard of them. But the primary investor in that company is Warren Buffett. Now that will be a whole different video because Warren Buffett is a very bright individual and he owns... And Bert rich. Very rich. And he owns Berkshire Hathaway, which you all carry stock in if you have a 401k. So there's going to be a tie-in with Flying J and CNG Technology and... Um, oh, who's the guy with all the pipelines? The... The CNG, I forgot his name, but I'll, I'll get that for you later because I carry his stocks also. And with the, if you've noticed out west, CNG is coming into all the truck stops now. All the pilots and fly, all the flying J's, which Warren Buffett has bought 38%, I believe, right now. And in five more years, he will own 89% of that. Oh, but I digress. Take it away. So, BYD, which is Warren Buffett's company basically. They've got orders from UPS, Goodwill, BNSF Railroad, the Los Angeles Port, the Long Beach Port, and the San Diego Port, all in California. And with that being said, uh, there are some other smaller companies. Daimler, which makes Mercedes, Freightliners, Western Stars, they're doing electric trucks. Cummins is doing electric trucks, and Proterra is doing electric trucks. They're just not as big. So, Warren Buffett's company, as I said, is selling to the ports in California. So, now this I, ties in with the, the article that was just published, right? This was 1114 in Bloomberg. So, just, this was in November. The port in Long Beach and the port in Los Angeles approved a plan to phase out diesel trucks 
in favor of natural gas and zero emission vehicles. So basically that means that after a set amount of time, no diesel trucks are going to be allowed in those ports. They say it's because they have an increased uh, asthma in those areas is oh, what yeah, they say. that's what that is. Did it say the percentages of how the, the phase out's going to work? It didn't say it on there, how, on the ports. However, in the same article, it says that CARB, which Carb. is a California Air Resources Board, which oversees all of California. We know about them. Is proposing something similar statewide. Which means statewide, they're going to get rid of diesel trucks and only allow gas, propane, natural gas, or zero emission trucks statewide. And they did have numbers on there. The truck sales, it wasn't the number allowed in, it was the number of truck sales in the state. I think within a couple of years had to be like at least 3% of them were zero emissions. And then it had a graduated scale up from that point of what they were projecting. But it may also depend on you know what technology does if they ain't out there and people can't buy them. So it's going to be the California government once again just like our government does, picks winners and losers, and their winner is going to go to electric and clean burning technology, and then they will eventually, and this was, this is talking about time, not trying to scare anybody because everything takes time, they'll phase this into a statewide thing in time, if they can, if it works. For yeah, them. and pretty much all the emission stuff on trucks, it originates in California, correct? Mm -hmm. And then after it's in California for a set period, a lot of times the government says, oh look, we should just implement that everywhere, because it's a good thing, right? Right. But they're calling it the Advanced Clean Local Trucks Plan. And I'm not sure why they call it that, because if you've done any studying up on CARB, California tends to exempt its own trucks, so if you live in California, you can have a truck with bad exhaust or whatever that doesn't meet their standards. But if you live in Nebraska, then you have to meet the standards. Even though you don't actually live there, you still have to meet the standards to drive there. With some of their trucks, they do do that. But they did put a lot of people out of business with their car because they didn't have the $60,000 that it took to upgrade. Right? Um, that's a lot of money to come up with, even though they helped you. They also the had plans that used taxpayer money that if your truck was so old, they would give you X amount of dollars. But you still had to come to up with 60000 And that's why it put a lot of people out of business. All right, guys. So that I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, actually, we've got a whole <laughs> folder full of interesting information that ties in with trucking. And some of it's our speculation, you know. Right. But we can all read the writing on the wall, too. Or we can try. All right, guys. It's time for more coffee. But we will catch you guys later. Is it she? <laughs> Carry on. And ladies, this is how your man should be making coffee in the mornings with Kahlua and a 357 strapped to his behind. What do you have to say for yourself over there? I'm going out in the woods. You might run into Bigfoot. <laughs>